I absolutely adore brazing off a pork roast, especially if I get a great big one, because then I have tons and tons of stuff to work with for the rest of the week. And I'm going to show you something that's absolutely delicious. I actually only discovered it quite recently. It's called pozole, which is a Mexican pork and hominy stew. And I couldn't believe how easy it was, and I couldn't believe more people didn't know about it. But here's how you do it. Okay, so I've got my pot over about medium heat. This is not butter. This is the rendered pork fat from my roast. I figured that's my flavor, and I've already seasoned it, and I've done the work on it, so I'm going to take advantage of it. You don't need very much. You really don't. I use about a teaspoon and a half. Okay, over here I've got my veggies. So I've got one great big onion I chopped up. This is a red sweet pepper. About three jalapenos. Now I did take the ribs and the seeds out of those. Two or three cloves of garlic. And this is, uh, I think that's two cans of hominy that I drained and rinsed. Hominy is just corn. Don't be afraid of hominy. A lot of people don't really know what, that is, what it is. It's actually been treated with lye, but it's corn that's been treated with lye. And I think it's delicious. I grew up in the South, of course, so uh, I don't mind experimentation with corn products that most people can't quite stomach. <laughs> but give it a try. I mean, if you're not used to it, give it a try. It's really, really good. And it uh, holds up really well in the soups and the stews and stuff. Okay, so everything but the hominy and those peppers go into the pot. You're just going to saute, saute these for just a minute. And I'm not going to take the time because you're actually going to let it kind of simmer and stew together for a few minutes. So, once you've got everybody sauteed off, this is the broth from the pork roast. Now, you don't want to use it full strength. Traditionally, um, pozole is made by simmering off on, in the stovetop um, the pork, and then you remove it and shred it and put it back in the same broth. I really think that that's too strong. Now, granted, it's simmered in water, and this is straight out of the pit. It's pure strength. So I only use about a cup. When you braise a, a pork roast like that, a, a pork butt or pork shoulder, you're only going to get about a cup and a half to two cups of, of liquid anyway. And about a tablespoon or two of that is going to be fat. All right. So this is just homemade chicken broth. Oh, well, yeah. I made chicken jello. You know that your broth or, or stock is really good if it gets that gelatin consistency. That's actually from the collagen that comes out of uh, the connective tissues and, and whatever meat that you're cooking. And you want to hang on to it. That's what actually gives a, a broth or a stock body and mouthfeel and that kind of that luscious mm, kind of thing that happens. Okay, so chicken broth. Let's see if I can get everybody up to heat. Here we go. Okay. How many into the pot? Let's get all of it. We don't waste anything. Now, this is the about mm, two to three cups of the pork that we braced off in the slow cooker, and I shredded it up. And now, this is my blank slate. I've made uh, all kinds of stuff with pork roast. I love to make um, tacos. Those are delicious. I love to do black beans with it and uh, do a little chipotle and adobo. I love that stuff. Love it. It's just just the best. All right, now here's our flavor bases. Let's see, let's get everybody over here. Okay, number one, chili powder. And this is just a commercial chili powder. You can make your own if you want to. And if I have time, money, and resources, I love to do that when I'm making chili. But I have discovered that there is um, a really high quality bulk chili powder available at the big warehouse store up the street. Okay, so now I like a lot, and this is, this is, I'm going to tell you the ratio in a minute, but this is where you really adjust however you like it. I use about three tablespoons of chili powder in a pot. It's about, it's about three tablespoons. So that's the three. Number two, cumin. I use about two tablespoons of the cumin. Now, if you don't like the heat from the chili powder or that smoky, wonderful, luscious thing that cumin gives, use less. Um, three, two, one. And the one is oregano. One tablespoon of oregano. So just adjust however you like it. You know, start with teaspoons if you're not really sure if you're, or if you're new to them. Okay, salt and pepper. 
just to be on the safe side, about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of pepper. And we've already seasoned all the different elements, so be very, very careful with the salt. The pork was seasoned, which means that the broth that came off of it was seasoned, and the chicken stock I made was seasoned, so be very careful. It will need some, but I'm going to go with maybe half a teaspoon, not much at all. Okay, we've got two secret ingredients. The first one, very careful with this stuff, but if you use it in just a tiny bit in the entire pot, it's going to give something that nothing else can give. Cinnamon. Very commonly used in uh, Mexican, Central, and South American dishes if they're savory. We're used to it only as a sweet. I probably used half a teaspoon. Again, it's one of those things. You can't take it out, so put in a tiny bit to begin with, and if you like it, knock yourself out. Chipotle and adobo. Oh, man, this stuff. Hot? Yeah, it'll take your head off if you're not careful, but that's part of the fun. Now, what I like to do when I'm working with um, chilies and soups and stews and stuff, this comes in a can, and this lovely liquid is what I like to put in my soups and my stews. So I'm going to actually put just about a teaspoon. Because i got some little people that for some reason just aren't crazy about the capsaicin. And they, don't, they can't handle the afterburn. We're going to have to work on them. Alright, so this is all we're doing here. Stir everybody together. Put it on about, I don't know, medium low. You just want to simmer. It just barely bubbles around the edges. And you want to let everything come together for about half an hour. And when you're done and it has simmered in, you're ready to go. And this is what we're going to look like. I think this is beautiful. See how the colors are just rich and deep and vibrant? Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, let me show you the traditional way to serve this. Actually, that's not true. It's not the traditional way to serve it. It's the way I do it because of the ingredients that I can get without spending a fortune here. All right, so just into the bowl. And I love the little bit of the red from the sweet peppers and that little pop of green. All right. Now, from what I understand, I haven't been lucky enough to have this in Mexico in a traditional home myself, but from what I understand, these are some of the traditional garnishes. Typically, it's chopped onion. I just happen to like green onion. I grew up with green onion as a major flavor, and I use it all the time. I think this is probably something I use more than anything. Shredded green cabbage. Now, I saw a note online when I was looking into this, and it said, don't use red cabbage. I have no idea why. I really can't think of why, but I love the little bit of crunch and brightness that cabbage brings. Diced radish, of course, which has that little peppery bite, and cilantro. If you hate cilantro, leave it off. The reason they bring this to the table, all the garnishes, is so everybody can do their own thing. And... I forgot my spoon. Hang on a minute. Ah, I need a spoon. Wait, don't move. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Let's see how we did. Not green onion or radish on mine. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's a winner. The good stuff. Try it. And if you want to find the recipe, go to www. Throwbillygourmet.com, and I'll have all the recipe and all the show notes listed right there for you. Thanks.